Hello everyone and welcome to Integrating Sexual Health, our online community of shared learning practice. This is a brand new community starting in September of 2021 and it happens to be uh, the, the day that I'm making this video which is the 24th of September 2021 and that's 32 years to this day that I moved to London to start work as a staff nurse on an HIV ward. So a lot has happened in that time and certainly with the education provision it gives great opportunities for us to be here and develop this community of online shared learning. So the whole idea behind this community is that even if we've got small numbers of people on individual sexual health modules, whereas in the past we wouldn't be able to run them with such small numbers, now it means that we can run all of our different modules, even if there's only one or two people per module, because you attend that module just to get your weekly learning materials, but then you all come here in this shared learning zone to be able to talk to each other, have live learning sessions. So uh, whereas in the past you would have gone to your own module to find your learning materials and you would have found the little forum discussion zones so you can chat with other students there, now those discussion zones have all been moved into this one centralised site so it means we're going to have lots of students from different uh, modules and programmes. You'll be able to see here the various modules and programmes that make up this particular site. Of course it starts off with sexual health skills and I actually designed that course for the Royal College of Nursing back in the early years of, the, uh, of, of this um, century, the, yeah, of this century, and started running it from the year 2004 onwards. Over that time, we've had almost 3,000 people on there. Um, I used to run it three times every year, and one September course, about 10 years ago, we had 304 students in one particular term. Now I'm lucky if I can get half a dozen. There are lots of reasons for this, most of them sadly to do with financing and time. So many um, nurses, midwives and other healthcare professionals who undertake this course often say that they just cannot get the funding for it. So on the one hand they're not getting the funding and of course university prices right across the country have all gone up. So financing is difficult. Also, for many people that want to do sexual health skills, they're often uh, people who aren't working directly in sexual health services. So maybe you're um, a practice nurse or a school nurse or maybe working in midwifery. So there's all different fields of practice where individuals may say, well, no, my, my job title isn't called sexual health, but obviously caring for my clients holistically, there are sexual health dim um, uh, d dimensions to the care that I provide. So lots of people want to do this course as a good foundation, a broad foundation, right across sexual health learning. Some others are people who are working in sexual health services, but maybe they've never done any formal education for this. So they might say, well, I want to come onto this course to consolidate my learning and to get credit for the learning that I've got. Other people actually come onto it saying they want to move into sexual health or they want career progression. So there are lots of reasons why people might undertake sexual health skills. And that's a 30 credit module uh, run at level six. All of the other sexual health modules are both at level six and seven. So one of the other ones you see listed here for number two is promoting sexual health. And with that course, it's taking the ideas that you would have learned around sexual health and now exploring effective health promotion ways and strategies for taking this forward. So it could be that you've got particular topics of sexual health that you're interested interested in and you want to develop these with your clients to promote their health and well-being. So that's the sexual health promotion module. Another one then is called contemporary issues in sexual health and quite often that's going to be for people who have got the foundations so that they've already done sexual health skills or maybe they have that knowledge through their experiential learning and now they want to do more. 
So the contemporary issues in sexual health, that's at level six and seven, and that module can change the themes all the time to whatever is contemporary around sexual health now at this particular moment in time, whenever you're studying it. And the level six and seven courses in HIV, now, that's the only course that we've been offering through blended learning. All of the others have all been exclusively online for quite a number of years. But with the HIV course, there were a few sessions taught on campus in class. Because of COVID, we've shifted away from that at the moment, but I still will be offering live online sessions. And maybe one day, you never know, we might go back into the classroom. But there will be timetabled live sessions. But instead of just doing them for the HIV course now, this new community site is going to give you all the opportunities to join in. So yes, the dates will be appropriate to the HIV course, but everybody else is invited as well. Now, some of you may be doing some of our modules as one-off um, course events. Hopefully that will inspire you to carry on and do more with us. So some of you are actually doing this as a top-up bachelor degree. So for those nurses in particular who have got a diploma in higher education and they want to get degree status, you just need 120 credits on top of your diploma at level six and that enables you to, to progress then with us through this um, BSc ONS in professional practice. And we have a route called the Sexual Health Route. So some of you may be doing some of these courses as part of that top up degree. But also there are various sexual health students going to be on the brand new um, postgraduate diploma in enhanced professional practice. Um, some people are doing the top up MA in healthcare practice and others are on the MSc advanced clinical practice. So it could be people doing uh, particular courses that have a sexual health focus or they may be doing their dissertations uh, with the MA or the MSc students doing their dissertations on a topic of sexual health. And finally, we've had at least six or seven uh, doctoral candidates over the last few years, all doing various aspects of sexual health care. So everybody is welcome. And that means you're going to meet people not just on your own module, but it could be across these different levels and on different courses, programs uh, um, and modules. Now, it's going to give us a lot of new opportunities, especially for the, uh, the all online courses where you didn't have many opportunities to meet each other face to face before. Now you will be able to meet face to face online um, by using webcams. It's going to give you the opportunity to share your learning with it with others. And therefore, you'll be able to learn the differences between people on the on on various modules, what those modules are looking at. And it'll give you a wide range of opportunities to chat to them about, for example, some of the things listed on this page. When I use this abbreviation about KWL, that's the way you may want to approach some of the weekly forum sites. So the forum sign is the little, uh, um, little icon that you can click into, and that's our chat zone. OK, so it's, it's, it's called a forum site. And you can go on there and maybe it's a good idea for you to think of KWL. Now that abbreviation comes from a book called Teaching Backwards by Griffith and Burns of 2014. And what they mean by KWL is whenever you're going to study a new topic or start a new course, go in and tell people what you already know about this. So if you look at this community site and see the weekly sessions that we can be thinking about, you might want to go in and tell us what you already know about that. So supposing one of the weekly sites is on about talking about sexual health. So whichever course you're on, you're going to need to be talking about sexual health matters with your clients. So we've got a whole session on here where we can look at sexual history taking and risk assessment. So we'll be able to talk to people about sexual health. So you might want to go in and tell us what you already know about that. 
and then tell us what you want, the W. What do you want from the particular module you're on to enable you to, to take that learning forward? And then once you've done the learning, you may want to pop back at some time and go back in and tell us what did you learn? There's the L. So know, want and learn. Okay, that's what we're going to be able to do. Then um, TLA stands for Teaching, Learning and Assessment. So let me just tell you a little bit about the Teaching, Learning and Assessment across uh, um, all of your sexual health modules and therefore what we can do with this particular site. So it's going to give us regular opportunities for you all to meet each other and to supplement the learning from your individual modules with what we're sharing uh, with one another. And it's going to give you lots of opportunities for you to attend this, although it's not compulsory. From the point of view of learning, um, th th this particular site is also going to give you lots of new opportunities that you might not have got um, from the individual module sites. First of all, there are going to be various resources that you can share from this site as well as the stuff you're doing on your courses. Also, there will be real-time teaching sessions with me or maybe somebody else. We can arrange these and these will take the place of what used to happen on the HIV course. Um, it's also giving us the opportunity to get together as a community rather than individuals just doing isolated modules and maybe never meeting each other again or you come across somebody's name on a different course and you recognise that you've been with them before but you haven't really built up much of a relationship with them. Now we've got the opportunity to build this community and you'll also notice that down the side of all the various module sites that I run I've got a sexual health Twitter feed on there and that means if you tell me you're interested in particular topics whenever I come across those on Twitter I always share them on that Twitter site so when you go into Moodle always have a look at the Twitter feed down the side of the page because there may be some really useful messages for each and every one of you and sometimes when there are specialized conferences on so it may be an international HIV conference or a reproductive health conference I can add those Twitter feeds in as well so supposing a Supposing there's a big international conference on for a whole week, then we can add that Twitter feed in there. So whenever you go on to Moodle, you can just look down and you'll see what's happening across that particular conference. And it may be a contemporary issue that's really relevant to you at this moment in time. And when it comes to assessments, um, you'll notice that right across all the different sexual health modules, no two assessments are ever the same. Okay, right across the courses, there's only one course that's got, um, uh, got an essay, that's sexual health skills. All the others are very, very different. So on promoting sexual health, for example, um, it's using this fantastic technology called Adobe Spark. And they create... A health promotion initiative in Adobe Spark and at level 7 they even learn how to edit some videos to put in some Adobe Premier Rush videos into their Spark pages. On the HIV course they actually do formal presentations as if they're going to a conference and speaking at a conference. So you've got lots of different types of assessments right across the sexual health um, uh, suite of courses. So it'll be great for you to talk to each other about your different experiences of the courses. And also by having a uh, weekly meeting or, or regular meeting times with me, you'll be able to have some tutorial time so you can talk about your assignments and really try to achieve the very best that you can with them. And when it comes to the end of each term, we'll be able to have a shared learning event together. So the HIV students have got to, for their summative, their marked assignment, they've got to do presentations to us all, at which now you're all invited. But rather than just come along and watch them present, why don't you just take a, a few minutes each and just tell us very, very informally about what you did for your assignment, what it was like, how you found it, and that type of thing. So the HIV students will have to present. The rest of you are asked to volunteer just to chat away and tell us a bit about your assignments so that you've got the opportunity to share and celebrate your learning with us all.
And finally, this is going to give us the opportunity to evaluate your various modules, to give feedback to me on how all this is going, and for, for us to feed forward for each of you, showing you where you can go with your future studies. So thank you all for listening to this video. I hope it's been a nice welcome for you. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to be able to celebrate our inclusive community together, um, look at ways to be responsive with all the different courses and hopefully you will enjoy your assessments because they've been written as compassionate assessments. Thank you so much for learn, uh, learning and uh, we look forward to sharing all of this with each and every one of you. Thank you.